Hello everybody. Welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations, or ODEs, as I'll refer to them for the rest of the course. So today we began Chapter 1, Developing the Language of ODEs. In particular, I want to give you several examples of ODEs and motivate the definitions of order of ODEs, independent versus dependent variables of ODEs, and from those notions, develop the ideas of autonomous versus non-autonomous ODEs and linear versus non-linear ODEs. So let's begin. So there are various definitions in the, that, I've, uh, that I've written in the text that you can read, but I want to focus on the examples in my lectures. So here are five examples of ODEs. Remember, an ODE is an equation involving a function and its derivatives. And that's what we see in these five examples. So when I'm teaching my students about dynamics and ordinary differential equations, I say the first thing you need to do if somebody gives you an ordinary differential equation and asks you to say, tell them something about the nature of the solutions, to stare at it and look at the structure, understand the structure. So if you look at these five ODEs, I think the first thing that jumps out is the first three involve only second derivatives. The highest derivative is the second derivative, or the largest derivative. And four and five involves a third and a fourth derivative. And that number, the number associated with the largest derivative of the function in the ODE is referred to as the order of the ODE. Now the function itself, the variable that you refer to, that you use to describe the function, is referred to as the dependent variable. And in 1, 2, and 3, the dependent variable is x. And in 4 and 5, the dependent variable is f and y. The independent variable is the variable that the dependent variable is a function of, that you differentiate with respect to. In 1, 2, and 3, that is t. And in 4 and 5, it is eta and x. Okay, with that out of the way, why is that so important? Well, with these notions clearly in our head of independent and dependent variables, then we can talk about what we mean by an autonomous versus a non-autonomous ODE and a linear versus a non-linear ODE. In particular, if the independent variable appears explicitly in the equations, then the, refer, the, the equation is referred to as non-autonomous. So, for example, in equation 2, the independent variable is t, and we see sine omega t, which is an explicit function of the independent variable. We don't see any t appearing in 1, for which t is also the independent variable. Equation 3, t is also the independent variable, and t does not appear explicitly in the equation, so it's autonomous. Equation 4, eta is the independent variable, and we don't see eta appearing anywhere explicitly in the equation. So that's an autonomous equation. Equation 5, x is the independent variable, and we see x appearing in the x squared second derivative term and the x to the fifth term. So it is non-autonomous. Okay, Auto the notion of autonomous versus non-autonomous involve the independent variable. Now the notion of notion of linear versus nonlinear is concerned with the dependent variable. So the dependent variable in 1, 2, and 3 is x. Nonlinearity or linearity means, so nonlinear means that there are nonlinear terms involving x, the dependent variable, and its derivative. So in equation 2, we have x times dx dt, and we have x cubed. Those are nonlinear terms. If the equation is not is not is not nonlinear, it's linear. <laughs> so, or if it's not linear, it's nonlinear. So go go back to equation one. We only see linear terms in x and 
the, the second derivative term, that, which stands alone, d squared x dt squared. So that is a linear equation. Now let's go to equation 4. The dependent variable is f. Uh, we see two nonlinear terms, f times the second derivative of f with respect to the, deep, the independent variable eta, and the square of the second derivative. And finally, in equation 5, we only see, we don't see y, any nonlinear terms involving y, the dependent variable, only derivative terms that are multiplied by the independent variable. Okay, and so that's, that's a uh, linear equation. So why do we care about these things? Remember, these all started from uh, dependent and independent variables. Well, it turns out that uh, if you consider linear systems, linear autonomous, regardless of the order, you can solve them explicitly. Okay, if it's linear but non-autonomous, you cannot solve it explicitly. All right. If it's regardless of the order, it can be as high as you want. Now, for first order, nonlinear autonomous, we can derive an explicit expression for the solutions. And we'll do that in the next lecture. It will raise a question of how useful that express, express, explicit expression is, and that's going to be our springboard to the geometric point of view of differential equations, Poincaré's point of view, and that's going to be quite interesting. Okay, but if, if we have a second order autonomous equation, regardless of whether it's linear or not, we can uh, we can't solve it explicitly. We could if it was linear, but we can learn quite a bit about the nature of the possible solutions, and they're not that complicated. We'll see that later on. But if it's second order non-autonomous, the nature of the solutions can be really complicated. In fact, they can be chaotic. So the point is here that um, just knowing the, the uh, properties of order, autonomous versus non-autonomous, linear versus non-linear, that tells us a lot about the nature of the uh, s possible solutions of the differential equation. And all of that will be justified as we go throughout the course. Now, it's useful to remember the, the, at the end of the introductory video, that statement of Dirac, Dirac said, he considers that he's understood an equation when he can understand the nature of the solutions without actually solving for the solutions. And these notions that I've just talked about take us a little way towards realizing this vision of Dirac. Okay, so that is a good place to stop. Well, let me mention one thing. In these equations, there are these other terms, omega in equation 1, alpha and omega in equation 2, mu in equation 3, uh, beta in equation 4. What are they? They didn't have anything to do with the independent and dependent variables. No, these are just constants or parameters. And one of the things we're going to want to study is, you know, essentially in applications, parameters always come along I mean, why don't you give them specific values? Well, you could, but it, you may want to consider systems with uh, different values for the parameters. You know, they could be masses or concentrations or lengths or different things. So you leave them in and you want to study how the nature of the solutions change. What do we mean by nature of solutions? Stability, for example, numbers of the solutions, how those change with parameters. And so that leads us into the notions of breakdown of stability, bifurcation theory, and so on. And we'll meet those later on. Okay, so that's enough for now. And I will see you next time where we pick up on these things and we develop this geometrical point of view of ordinary differential equations due to Poincaré. Bye for now.